You're watching The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee. DJ Envy is still uh, running around L.A. trying to get his acting career started. We got a special <laughs> guest in the building, my guy Jeff Johnson. Yes, sir. What's happening, brother? I'm great, man. Uh, BET's Man Cave. Yes. I feel like I'm in a man cave every day in here. I believe Because there's a bunch of guys talking. I sit here. I try to zone it out. But we can tune in to you, hear. You don't zone out, though. You oh, yes, oh, yes, does. I do. <laughs> they could talk about a million things. I, we, I, won't I can hear call her. Yee. Yee. I huh? don't listen to anything. <laughs> I've managed to master the art of tuning out in the studio. Well, we hope you tune in to Man Cave. Yeah, now that yes. sounds like an interesting show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fantastic show. We, it we appreciated Charlemagne coming through last week. Thank you for having uh, me. Our, our fourth episode. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, we I, I pitched this show to BT about four years ago. Um, was tired of not seeing men's conversation on TV. Right. Um, unless we're talking about sports or... It's like we're, we're caricatures, right? It's either this hyper over masculine thing mm -hmm. or this um, you know, metrosexual thing. And I it, love and, seeing and your no... guys' sensitive side. Our sensitive side? Mm -hmm. we, we have sensitive like, side? Like I like to hear you guys talk about, you know, breaking uh, up and how to yes. get over a breakup for men. Because <laughs> we talk about that all the time as women. But for men, like, what do y'all do to get over a breakup? What well, depends? New pussy. I knew well, not me because I'm married, but back well, in the day. Every, but every breakup's not the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, True. sometimes, sometimes, yes, new pussy is is a, is a is a, a temporary band aid for the pain. Sometimes it's not even a band aid. Sometimes <laughs> it's just a response. Okay. But but it it just depends. I mean, every relationship every relationship for y'all isn't the same. So y'all don't go through sister sister therapy. For every no, dude you break up with. Yeah, we do, we do. No. Nah. Because if we're dating you and we feel like it's a breakup, it's definitely something happened. We definitely need a little bit of... See, that's the problem with guys is that y'all don't do that brother therapy with each other when you go through things. Oh, I agree. No, And we I do agree. it for everything. Well, that's because we don't get emotional connections with the women <laughs> we deal with most of the time. Most of the time, ours is just like physical, sexual things. I feel oh like women God. be having no, but emotional connections. But a lot of times we be lying. Yeah, y'all do be lying. Because you know, you know as well as I do... <laughs> You could break a chick off five times, a guy, know a guy, break a chick off five times, and then want to end it, but then be mad when he see her with somebody. Well, anything more than three times is a relationship. So if you, if you sleep with a girl more than three times, that's a relationship. That doesn't mean there's emotions that That's when emotions dictate. get involved, after the third time. And I think, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think sometimes know. people yeah. think that women can't do that, and women do that also. I don't believe They can you. also not be emotionally involved as well. Oh, I know some of those women. Right, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Man killers. And I feel like guys sometimes approach <laughs> women in a way where they automatically think that they think we want to be in a relationship. When we might just want to date, and so they automatically assume, don't get too attached. I'm just letting you know, I don't want to be in a relationship. And then all of a sudden, they want to be in a relationship. Yeah, but most, but even women who say they don't want to be in a relationship have have mapped the shit out before the first date starts. You think mm. so? No. Break that down. Break that down. What you I mean believe map in it no out? expectations. I I know women that before the first date starts. They thinking of baby names, <laughs> my kid going to look cute and have blue eyes. Oh gosh. All, all this kind of stuff that 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 is saying, I'm I'm stepping to this date because I want a relationship. I think that's I want a misconception. Serious. Oh, no, no, no. Because I've seen it. Because sometimes the way I would approach it is maybe we'll end up being friends. Maybe it'll be something more. I'm not sure. It's and you've always date. been that way. Always been that way. What? Unless I you meet that baller be... shot caller with that seven-figure contract. <laughs> I know plenty of ballers and shot callers. <laughs> it doesn't phase me. <laughs> but, yeah, I just do think that sometimes men have this perception that women really want to be in a relationship and we have all these things planned out. And really, we, you know, we're weighing out our options. No, and, like... and, and, and honestly, I think that's why we did Man Cave right. because we, we all are complex, right? Mm -hmm. So every guy doesn't want the same thing. Every guy doesn't think the same way. There's some threads, of course, and, and things that we do. But I was just tired of not seeing any complexity in men on TV. Like you saw how Tank likes to get his butt eaten out and stuff when he was up here? Well, well that that's not a secret. Like, Tank's been talking <laughs> about getting his ass eaten on air for a long time. But that I was... feel like that's something men don't like to talk about so much. Eh, why not? I've been talking about right, it. The, man, the man's cave. I made comfortable. I made Tank comfortable to talk about. I didn't mean for him to put his legs up in the air on the show, but I, you know, well, he's not I mean. alone, Tank. I, I would think though, Jeff, in this climate, you'd be doing something more like politically driven. That I would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Because you, well, you're Jeff Johnson. You about to Kanye me? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just saying. Put you in a box. I'm saying because you're Jeff. That's what we. That's what we know Jeff Johnson at. No, but that. But that's that's the exact same conversation you have with Kanye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, no. Yeah. So, so the thing about it is the whole reason I did Man Cave is because I didn't want to be in that box. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, 
And and I got tired of every time I go somewhere, I got to have a political conversation with you when there's right. more that I want to talk about than politics. And and frankly, there's a whole new younger generation of millennials that got the that got the political thing down. So so uh, I'm not saying they're perfect, and I'm not yeah, saying that yeah. that that. And, and I'm not even talking about all the people on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I think that there I'm I'm seeing young cats in communities all over the country that I think are dope. And, and that are having these conversations and, and leading movement. And while they can grow and there's some sophistication that I think can happen, I just want to be up my whole self. Right. And I got tired of, I got tired of showing up at the club and being at the bar and dudes want to talk about politics when I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm at the damn strip club. And you drink? Dude, like, right. What right. you doing here? <laughs> so, so no, man, I, I, and, and I think that a lot of brothers are there. So yeah, a lot of yeah. brothers get trapped in the box of their job mm -hmm. and and are frustrated as a result of it. And and I want I want to create a show that gives us a permission to be our whole self. And but men I guess, for I, men oh, is like therapy too, I feel in a way, just because certain things guys, I feel like don't talk about with their friends. So they might hear you guys talking about it on Man Cave it. and feel like, oh man, I was just having a similar problem, but I couldn't call up my homeboy Charlemagne because he's going to laugh at me. You know, and we still gonna get to the root of the problem, but I'm gonna get this joke. I'm gonna get these. No, jokes and it's up. always gonna be jokes. Yeah, right. it's always gonna. And be politics jokes. intersect, I think, also with a lot of what you would have to talk about. It it is there and it's mm -hmm. a thread, but it's not the focus. Right. And 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 Charlamagne, to your point, there are a lot of people who were traditionally followers of mine that were pissed because mm -hmm. they was looking for woke TV, uh, where all we did from beginning to end was talk about social political issues and how we gonna solve all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like one. Nobody's watching that 10:30 at night on BET. That that's not where you go for that. Um, two, and to to your point, we need spaces because because people keep asking, was this gonna be the barbershop? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, no, it's not gonna be the barbershop because because the one thing about the barbershop is you could talk about anything, but you'll never talk about you. Yeah, like yeah, don't yeah, no yeah, no dude yeah, roll up in the barbershop real. like man I'm having some challenges with my yeah. girl. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, can y'all yeah. help me through this? There's <laughs> no transparency going on in the barbershop, but it's hardcore honesty. And the problem with that is we've made the barbershop seem like it's therapy that is not. And so we need a space. And and that's why I mean I, I think you saw it when you came on. One of the things that makes our show different is we're not trying to get no aha moment. Right. We're not trying to trap nobody into saying something they don't want to say. Yeah. We're going to be transparent, let you say what you want to say. If you want to say it, boom. If you don't, it's not authentic anyway. And so we lose in the man cave if we're inauthentic in the name of just trying to get somebody to say something that gets tweets. That's so funny because that's exactly, I have this podcast called Lip Service that I do, mm -hmm. but it's all women. And that's exactly how we are. We don't want to get anybody to say something that's, it's more like a relaxed environment to talk about your own personal, intimate things. Yet and they educate. still end up saying something crazy. Who? Every guy that comes just on. Wax. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're more likely to say yeah. the crazy thing when you're comfortable anyway. Yeah, and then absolutely. it's real. Yeah. That's what was scary about fun. Man Cave, though. It's fun. Because I don't know if men should be left alone by themselves in this climate. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Four no, you, guys you, you, you are extra sensitive, too. Yeah. You're, you're, I, because, cause, I mean, I think you're on the radio <laughs> all the time. I think you, you, you are. Because every time there was something that was mildly sexist. You like no 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 no. But well, that's just the shift in me, period. Though. I mean, it? yeah, I think I'm, cause I got two daughters now, and I'm just I've, I've really been thinking, like really consciously thinking about the way we as men have historically treated women and the things that come out of my mouth, come out of our mouth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even when I said new pussy a while ago, I was like, let me bring that back. I could have said that. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> it's you know gone. It's gone. <laughs> but but what I, what I meant with you is it's like I think your your voice is necessary. Not not that you have to be doing something political. But your 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 political voice, I think, is necessary in this climate. And you know what the beautiful thing is? It's not going anywhere. Right. Word, word, it's, word. it's just I I get to be my whole self on man cave. If somebody wants to invite me on CNN, then I may go. I'm 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 speaking to a group of students at a community college in Baltimore. Um, you know, this week, I'm I'm engaging with folks that are running for office, trying mm -hmm. to help them either raise money or um, do I, I do communications work. So so doing their comms work. So. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just from a public leaning face, just opening myself up. One, I just want to have more fun. Right, right, absolutely. Um, and and two, again, I want to create dope men's content. Right. So Man Cave is just the first of several projects that we're gonna roll out. Cause I'm I'm creator of this show, co-executive producer and host. And so this was the first of a series of pieces of content that I'm gonna roll out. Not necessarily in one place, but but broadly. What and and the black. Oh, go ahead. But I'm saying the black political pundit has changed a lot because, you know, 
like you see people like Angela Rye on yeah. Wild and Out and Simone yeah. Sanders at the BT Social Awards. Like yeah. it's changed. Like we don't ex- we don't expect them to just be in one box. We understand that they're humans and complex individuals. That's true, but but it's a trade off, right? Because we know that Angela's able to do that now because she don't work on the Hill no more. Mm. And so you, you you make these trade offs because if if I'm a show up on Wild and Out, there are clients that are now not gonna hire me. Got you. Be- because in the political mm-hmm. space, there's a certain level of credibility that you have to have. Now, Angela, I think, navigates that better than most. But we we all know, too, that Angela's made decisions to do more media than she does consulting. Got you. And so for me, I, I still want to impact the stuff that happens behind the scenes. And so my clients are clients who are asking me to come in and help with messaging so I can help candidates better reach the people that they want to reach. You. That I can raise money for folks. So I'm playing the game. I'm just not playing it the way other people think I should. Mm-hmm. Got you. Now, let me ask you this. This is a common question that we get us get, get asked all the time from men. If a man messes up and cheats, what can he do to get his woman back? Does he want her? He wants her back. <laughs> he messed up. He got caught. No, that's an important question. <laughs> it's not it's not every man that cheats on his woman don't want her. Sometimes mm-hmm. that's an indication that it's time for you to go. <laughs> so, so and sometimes trying to get her back just means you fucked up the other options and you're trying to have a safe place to land until you get oh, the other options going. No, I'm, I'm being serious. <laughs> no, okay. So so no, I mean I, I think brothers who are in earnest, right? And and I've been there in my own life before. So brothers who are in earnest about wanting to get a woman back need to spend less time trying to figure out how to get them back and more time trying to fix your shit. Mm-hmm. So I, I know cats that when they're trying to get her back, it's all about, baby, I want you back. I want to do this, do this, do this. Not, let me show you that who I was in this moment is not who I am all the time. Yeah, the best apology is change behavior. It is. That's it. Now, when you say you've been there before, what makes men cheat? Pussy. <laughs> there's just, there's no nothing, pussy. There's nothing lacking because sometimes women take it very personally. Like it's my fault. What did I do wrong? What's missing from our relationship? So so often men are. Just, it's just straight ego. Is is there somebody that can make me feel great right now? And nothing else exists. So so I know cats that cheat and they're not even thinking about who they with. Mm-hmm. It is this moment right now. Tomorrow this ain't even gonna matter to me. Uh, I'm going home to whoever. I'm paying the bills for whoever. I'm trying to take care of whoever. This is a moment in time, and it don't mean shit. And and it's immature because in a real way, everything we do has consequences for the people that are in our lives. But men ain't processing it that way. That's why I always say men cheat for ego and women cheat for emo. Emotions. Men just got, we just want to say that we smash something new most of the time. Feel like we still got it. Or not even say it. We just, we are just so childish sometimes that we just want, because our girl now knows us, or our woman now knows us, or our wife now knows us, that she not stroking the ego yeah, on yeah, a regular yeah, basis. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a bunch of dudes that got caught up just because you made me feel like a man when the person that I'm with treats me mm-hmm. like I'm supposed to know I'm a man. Yeah, don't stop moaning, ladies. Don't ever stop moaning. Because <laughs> 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 all I need to hear is a moan from a new woman, and I'm gonna be over here, okay? Isn't it annoying if a woman's too loud? What? It's relative. Too loud, because it could be like too much. Like, okay, you're acting. Not me. I'm doing my job. <laughs> well, you, you can be loud. not loud and be acting. I mean, it's, <laughs> right. it, it, her, her ability to be authentic in the moan is important. I think I moan too much, to be honest with you. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Terrible I'm visual. Be I'm going to be honest with you. I think I moan too I much. I just saw you Dang. laying on your stomach. <laughs> I was just, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> I don't want that either. <laughs> now talk about wanting to take shit back. I don't, want, I don't want that. I don't want that vision of <laughs> yeah, you. Nah. Now, now why, why'd you cut your dreads back in the day? Uh, I was just tired of them. Right. I, I promised myself that if I ever got tired of them, I would cut them immediately. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so 15 years I had them. I woke up one day, was like, all right, I'm done. And then the next day I cut them and that was it. And I haven't regretted it at all. all right. And then I burned them. Why? Wow, was it, was the spirit, was the yeah, spiritual you know, or? man, I, I believe in dark magic, man. I don't want nobody having them shits in a bag, attaching True them to indeed. a doll. You could have sold them to Fetty Wap. Remember, yeah. he bought that woman's um, arm. <laughs> yeah, and that's the last person I want to have. I don't. If I want to, I definitely don't want him to have. Them. But no, nah, no, nah, it, it, it just was, it was time. And and what's funny is, I think again, people box us in. And I had a couple of people that I work with, like, yo, that's your brand. You can't do that. But what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Um, my brand is me, not my hair. And so, um, and, and then to be straight up, we, we were actually talking about this on Man Cave. Um, my money changed when I cut them. 
so more it money? was absolutely there mm. was there was consulting money and money from corporations that I didn't even think about going after that came to me when I cut them. Wow. And so the thing for me was I didn't cut it for that. Um, and I'm and I'm glad that I always was authentic in, in just wanting to be who I am in whatever moment. And at and, and this moment, it just wasn't with locks. You think that still matters to these corporations now? It depends, how, it depends what you're doing for them and who the company is. Got you. So I don't think it matters for a company that's engaging millennials mm -hmm. around culture. Um, but I think it matters for a financial services company or an investment firm. Um, that that has traditional clients mm -hmm. that aren't looking for you to show up with locks. So I think it just depends on the industry. Now, you went to Steve Harvey with this show. Is that, that's what finally got it done? Unfortunately, yeah. Um, Why you say unfortunately? <laughs> 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 no, I mean, if, if I'm going if, if to be totally honest, I mean, it, it was at, at that time, you know, there was no kind of Steve baggage. Um, so you, you, people have been hard on Steve for a number of before, things. Before that, his visit to Trump Towers. That th there was none of that. Yeah, and yeah, so um, Steve was super hot with black folks still in a real way. And that's not to say that he's not now. Mm -hmm. But you understand what I'm saying. Um, and I think that BT was interested in being in a Steve Harvey business. Yeah. And and I was glad they were interested in being in Steve Harvey business because it was that relationship. I had I had written a book with Steve. So act like a success, think like a success. He and I worked on that together. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, a business relationship at the time. And and um, and I was just interested, too, in how do we put out some men's content that isn't trying to tell women what to do? I never agreed with that. I just think it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I never agreed with that. We, we got enough of our own shit to work on without trying to tell women how to be anything. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was another thing with Man Cave. I, I was deliberate about we will not... We won't have a segment. We won't have a day. We won't have anything. It's more we're of us tell just women what eavesdropping on what you guys are talking That's about it. when we're not around. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is more valuable than us trying to tell you how to be you and we ain't figured out how to be us. Yeah, I think that's something, I mean, even with me, I'm constantly working on just in general. Like, you know, just telling other people how to be them. Like, you can't tell a gay person what gay people should be doing. A white mm -hmm. person can't tell a black person how, what racism feels like. Like, like it's just... It's, it's interesting to always have those conversations with yourself. Mm -hmm. We had a discussion earlier about um, Janae Iko and Big Sean and how she started dating Big Sean. She was in a relationship with somebody else. Big Sean asked her to go out to the game, sit courtside, and she said, well, I'm in a relationship, but I'll go with you as a friend. Yep. Is there anything wrong with that? <laughs> Hell yeah, something wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, listen... There, there's a difference between having male friends and mm -hmm. having new male friends. Well, they had worked together already, so they knew each nah, other. Co-workers, right. co-workers is not friends. <laughs> so, so if every co-worker you have is now a friend, it's about to be a whole lot of people in some fucked up relationships. Because, because friend means I have a vested interest in who you are disconnected from me. Mm -hmm. Which means I ain't coming at you on some, I'm trying to take you from your man. And, and dudes just going to be who they are. So I'm not even mad at Big Sean for how he carried it. Right. The thing for me is, that's not your friend. So you can't be friends with somebody that's interested in you. That's not what I'm saying. No. I'm asking. He says no. But... Not if you my girl. But no. see, that goes back to what you said earlier. You can't, build a, you can't build a friendship. You can't build a friendship with somebody you're interested in while you're in a relationship. That just don't work. But okay, so let's just say he's interested in her. She's not interested in him. Can she then... I'm going to tell you why not, that's a not terrible courtside. example, though. Exactly. <laughs> Not court Second row. And Big Sean and Janae ended up together. So that's why it's a terrible example. Right. Like, they really ended up together. Yeah. No, and he knew what that was. He knew what that was, and she knew what that was. Right. That wasn't no friendship. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to what you said earlier. It's the same thing. If a woman comes to you and says, yo, I'm going out with this guy, sit courtside, all right, I hope you're staying with him. Because clearly you want to be with that yeah, person. Yeah, exactly. Why, why would you be in a relationship and want to be seen courtside with another dude? Okay, uh, let's take it outside of them, though. She's mad. I'm going to tell you why Angelique is so personal. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Angelique was at the game with some guy, left the guy where he was to go sit courtside with Jay-Z and Michael Kaiser. Really, with Kaiser? Is? Yes. Kaiser nope, a... it was you, Jay-Z, and Michael Kaiser. I got the pictures. <laughs> and were you and Kaiser friends already? That is like my boy. That's like my family. Okay. Pretty much. And old boy got mad. <laughs> she just left him up there. I don't think he was mad. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't think he was? I'm sure you know he was. She yeah, don't but care. He, but listen, first of all, he wasn't my boyfriend. Secondly, I had told him prior to the See game what happened was. <laughs> that <laughs> I might already be going. So, you know. But I you left like, him in the seat. 
Yeah, he was in a suite. He was fine. There's oh, other people. Yeah, no, that's unacceptable. There's There's other people. That's suite. unacceptable. <laughs> that's unacceptable. You should have said, I, did, and did he take you home? Or did you leave somebody else? I don't need anybody to take me home. I live right down the block. See what I'm saying? She knew better than that for that ride. That wasn't a date. I don't need a ride home. <laughs> that wasn't even a date. He was the That's real friend. That's what I'm friend. saying. It wasn't a date. I met you there. <laughs> Let's go. Anyway. Now, now, but back to the Steve Harvey thing, right? Do you think that we as black people sometimes, we cut our nose off to spite our face? I mean, we, I mean, we throw the whole baby out with the bathwater sometimes. As much as Steve has done for black people and the black community, he has one mishap and all of a sudden it's fuck Steve Harvey. I don't I don't know if a lot of people thought that was the first mishap. Yeah, I don't think it was just one mishap. Um and so Steve's always been good to me. I, mm-hmm. I got no issues with Steve. Um I think that he could have handled the Trump visit different. Mm-hmm. And um I, I, I thought that I thought that he overestimated the mo he underestimated the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think I think Steve thought he could go in there, have a conversation, come out, and it was gonna be no big deal. Cause he had been doing that before. They do business as far as like the right. Miss Universe pageant and all that right. stuff like that. Yeah. So 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 I think it was just a misstep in that regard. But yeah, I think that a lot of times we are so quick to challenge somebody's blackness yeah, yeah, based yeah. on one thing that they do yeah. that we cut people off who actually have done the best they can Absolutely. to be good to us. Yes. And even if they haven't been perfect in doing it, they haven't done anything malicious. And so even when people make mistakes, that's not the same as somebody being overtly anti-black or overtly trying to manipulate black people or overtly trying to take advantage of black people. And I don't think that's who Steve has ever been. Never. Right. And so I, I do, I take issue with that with with not only how people have done Steve, but how they've done other people. Um, so we got to get over that because because sometimes what, what we what we don't realize is we are separating ourselves from allies that we ultimately can use later on. We keep playing ch- checkers and it's chess. Yes. And Steve is constantly empowered black people like you see it on his different you know television shows that he has all the black people that work there or like when he does his camps where he's bringing all the porn disenfranchised kids young and he's men been consistent no with that i mean that, that 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 camp is done he's done for nearly a decade um the hoodie awards where he was recognizing businesses when nobody was talking about small yes. black businesses he did he did for over a decade um he's hired a ton of black folks way more folks of color on his yes. staff than people who aren't, and 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 to me, that is what where you where you invest your money yes. and your time is what you really care about. And so those kind of small mistakes is is bullshit. When when half of the people that are coming at you don't do a fraction of what you do for the community, and that's what confuses me. Because like, Steve Harvey canceled. I'm like, how the fuck is Steve Harvey canceled? <laughs> <laughs> how he canceled? <laughs> canceled one of the main people that's out here helping us. But some of those people never liked him, and so and, True and, and you know this as well as I do. Some people you just never gonna please. Yeah. So fuck them. So for Man Cave, let's get back to Man Cave yes. for a second. Let's. All right. So do you think that, um, are you ever cautious about giving away like secrets of things that men do for women who are eavesdropping on this conversation? Because I know sometimes I do my podcast and I ask questions like, why do guys do this or that? And certain guys don't want to answer because they don't want to tell on themselves or what other guys are the real reasons why. I mean, we we it, the show ain't G thirty five classified. I mean, it's it's like listen, the 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 goal was funny is this, I got two tweets, excuse me, two texts in the last forty eight hours from brothers who said, "Man, thank you, because my girl or my wife better understands me now." Oh, that's from great. watching this show. Um, I I don't think that the that the stuff that we're talking about that guys talk about is is some top secret that no women know anyway. Mm-hmm. And so it, in, in 2018, there's not a whole lot of stuff guys are doing that women don't know about, especially in the internet, in a day of social media, when you got a, when you got a bunch of people talking about it anyway. So no, we're not giving away secrets that people don't know about. And if women can better understand their man, better understand their father, better understand their son, I'm not worried about a small fraction of brothers who don't want stuff to get out <laughs> because they want to manipulate women anyway. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm about I'm about how do we use this content to help brothers be better understood versus help brothers continue to run game. Do you think you could forgive cheating? I feel like men feel like it's harder to forgive a woman than it. You're asking me expect, what? Could you forgive a woman for cheating? Could if your you woman your... popped that pussy for another man, Jeff. But she said, if look, my wife yeah. slept with another dude, yeah. I hope <laughs> in my most spiritually grounded moments that I would be able to forgive her. 
Um, I know it would be difficult. Wife is too know. tough, bro. I, 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 I don't I, know. I've been with my woman 20 years, and she's definitely cheated on me before, but not as a wife. Wife different. Yeah, I don't know. You can't cheat on me anymore, wife. I don't know. Girl, l- listen, here's my thing. Life is a long time, and none of us are perfect, and shit happens. Mm-hmm. And I hope i would be able to view it that way. And it, and I think it would depend how it went down, too. Right. Like if 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 I found out that she been seeing this dude for two years and they've been rendezvousing in Fiji. She in love. Then nah, we would have a problem. But if I found out, you know, she'd been working late nights for a couple of months and shit went down and it was a one off, then then I, I, I would hope I would be able to know that I know my wife well enough to know what she's invested in my life, in my family's life, in my children's life. Um, I know her heart. I know her spirit. Uh, so I hope I will be able to, but I don't know. But them two months now, it depends what she was doing in that office now. No, I'm, and I'm just saying, man, then I don't know. she gave him some head in the first see, question. And here's the other thing. <laughs> you made the mistake of asking for details. Nigga, I don't want to know how big his dick is. You know, I don't, I you don't know, women, know. We, we like details. Yeah, no, nah, I don't, don't want to know, know none details. of that. <laughs> I don't, that was your mistake. I did, I did. Yeah. Because those are the things that make me feel better. If he's not as big as me. But then if he's bigger. Yeah, he, he clearly was. The way she I don't care it. if he's minuscule. <laughs> I don't want to talk It don't about matter it. to me. I don't want no. Insert wax song if, here. <laughs> if this dude had erectile dysfunction and it just ate her pussy good, I don't want to know none of it. I don't want to know nothing. I, nothing at all. Because all that does, all that is, is shit for you to remember later. Got you. Yeah, if, if you, you know, they say if you cheat on somebody and you don't get caught, you shouldn't tell them. Fact. Fact. <laughs> the cheat and not get caught is the method. Fact. For what? Y'all said fact so quick. If it's over, why? Yeah, why bring that negativity to people? What's the benefit? I'm just saying that's what I've heard. If you no, cheated, I'm, no, don't. but I'm asking you. What's what? Tell me what the benefit is. If you cheated, it's over, and you didn't get caught. Well, the benefit's probably more for you if you feel guilty about it. I got a pastor. Some- I can talk to him. Yeah, you got to deal with that on your own. <laughs> right, I'm saying it's more of a benefit for yourself. That's but why wh- they say. But if you what's cheat, the benefit? Caught, maybe you don't have to worry about getting caught later. Yeah, but if it's over, Mm -hmm. it's done. You got plausible deniability. Or maybe it's an indication. (laughs) If you didn't catch me there, it wasn't me. That we can now discuss. I got an evil twin (laughs) from Wakanda. (laughs) (laughs) Now, how do you pick the cast? Why, why uh, Tank and not Tyrese? Really? Um, why Tank and not Tyrese? I I don't know if we were choosing just from R and B singers. He's trying to be funny. Um, that was a rhetorical question. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't supposed to answer that one. Like, <laughs> like where is he going with this? <laughs> but how did you choose the cast though? So t- to be honest, Tank was Tank was in a running from the beginning because Tank came out and was willing to do the pilot for free. Mm-hmm. Um, we we had Tank, John Sally, Laz Alonzo, and Orlando Jones, and all those brothers came out just gratis and was like I, I believe in the idea I think this would be dope um, and Tank was just funny uh, mm-hmm. his energy was great and um, he's great at and talking he could, about relationships yeah, and, he, and he could connect with other brothers so yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it was it was good in that regard but then we had about 40 cats come out and do a two day casting session um, and cats from all over the place we had hood cats we had suburban cats we had cats who were journalists we had folks who were comedians um, we had we had brothers who were gay. We had brothers who were straight. We I mean, so, so it, was, it was a real attempt for us to say, what's the real complexity of, of black men and how do we bring all of that into the space? And then it was really about how can how can we be great? Um, it's almost like how do you put together a dope quartet? Gotcha. Like for a dope quartet, you don't need four great soloists. You need cats who know how to play with other cats. And so Cosign was just this young dude who... Um, you know, constantly acted like he had never been there before, even mm-hmm. though he'd been in some crazy spaces. Um, just brings this youthful excitement um, that we loved. And Slink is just a savage. Hilarious. I mean, just a savage. Slink and played Black Jesus as well. From the moment he showed up on set, it was like, we got to have this guy. It was yeah. like, somebody asked me to describe him. I'm like, he is everybody's drunk uncle at the family reunion, um, even when he's not drunk. Right. Uh, and so it just came together. And what was funny was um, Tank and I knew each other and Coast and Tank knew each other, um, but none of us really knew Sling. But from day one, it was immediate um, connection. So, I mean, I think you saw being on set. It's not one of those things where when the camera shut off, 
everybody go back in their phone and nobody's talking. Yeah. Um, they're my guys, man. And and every day we get closer and closer, which makes the show better and better. Um, cause the cause the camaraderie and the energy is is real. So how do we get people to start watching, man? Cause I don't know, not I do not understand why people are not watching BET right now. It's pissing me off. BET got some of the best content on television. And well, we- and 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 I I might get in trouble for saying this, but at the end of the day, what what BET does, what BET is beginning to do great, and I love um, that that Connie is Connie. there. I absolutely love Connie. I'm loving this late night lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, we got we just got to do better of promoting content off right. network. Um, yeah. We got great content on the network. We got to do a better job of promoting that content off network. Yeah, Viacom should be promoting BET on all the other channels like they do VH1. We should be all over the place, yeah. and and obviously that's a money issue. So so you you invest money where you get money. Our job as Man Cave is to do the best show that we can. So that the network and others want to make sure everybody knows it's out there. So why so, come fronting on the black people, basically? Man, don't start. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> now I know that's what you're all the money tomorrow. Damn, if I'm asking that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, man, Jeff Johnson. When does Man Cave come on Thursday? Every Thursday night, 10:30 p.m. Eastern. Or right, check it out on BT. It's the Breakfast Club. Thank you for coming, brother. Thank you, man. 